Automated Podcast. Welcome to Automated. I'm your host, Mark Verbenkov, and in this weekly podcast, we will be exploring the impact of emerging technology on jobs, society, as well as us, with business and technology leaders, researchers, and independent professionals across the world. So in today's episode, we'll be looking at the GameStop short squeeze mania, how automation is connected to it, and what are some of the social repercussions that may unfold. So for those of you who haven't really been paying attention, I'll give a quick explanation of what the GameStop event is, as well as have some links in the show notes if you want to learn more about it and dive a little bit deeper into it. So essentially, GameStop is a brick and mortar company that focused on selling video games in its stores and had its stock highly shorted, mostly by a number of hedge funds. So this means that the hedge funds were betting that the price of the stock would go down further, and if true, they would make a profit once the price had dropped. So up to here, it actually kind of makes sense. Uh, Due to the pandemic, most brick-and-mortar companies have actually been struggling overall, and video game sales especially have moved really into digital platforms. So they've been sold online businesses and a lot less so the brick-and-mortar ones. So with these two trends in mind, it would actually lead one to assume that GameStop, who also hadn't reported profits for a few years, would have a further stock price drop. Um, But it is important to note that uh, even with this overly negative picture of the stock, this was actually debated, especially by the Reddit community, which I'll talk about in a minute. But for the sake of argument, let's go with this negative bleak picture of GameStop. So the real issue here was that, as I mentioned before, a highly shorted stock, what we're talking about here is up to 140% GameStop was shorted. So this is called a naked short, and it is actually illegal ever since the 2008 financial crisis. And it acts as a bet against non-existing shares of a company, which sounds like it's not possible, but due to the uh, market magic, it is. Uh, And furthermore, this added downward pressure actually would have helped the price go lower, more or less locking in the profits for these hedge funds while further harming the actual business. So the subsequent change and consequent mania happened with the coordination of a Reddit community called Wall Street Bets, where people share news, memes, and personal anecdotes about acting and playing in the stock market. So this group of retail investors, which numbered in the millions, um, collaborated and bought shares of the game stock in massive numbers forcing the price up and creating what's called a short squeeze where the hedge funds uh, that were shorting the stock were forced to close their positions by buying back into the stock, which in turn pushes the price even higher. So if you're at all unfamiliar with market mechanics, it's okay. The essential point is that the stock price rose, hedge funds lost money, a lot of it, about uh, $5 billion, uh, Melvin Capital itself, lost four and a half billion alone in the event and retail investors took control of the stock market or at least this one stock so smaller investors uh, were really able to flip the traditional finance script in what's being called a david versus goliath moment and this has really led to a lot of articles podcast episodes as well as interviews on how this has changed things and what the repercussions might be So before I tie this event to automation technology, I think there's one last important point to take note of. And this is both that Reddit, where these small retail investors were communicating, as well as the main investment app, Robinhood, which primarily focuses on enabling uh, smaller purchases for retail investors to get their toes wet in the financial markets, both shut down accessibility to both communication and trading in an effort to stop the continued short squeeze. They were using justifications such as uh, there was harmful language on Reddit, uh, in the Reddit forum, as well as uh, 
the shutdown of trading was protecting unsophisticated investors and others from losing a lot of money. So keep this in mind as it does tie into the social consequences that I'll be talking about at the end. So I've been loosely following the event uh, over the last couple of weeks, and the reason I really wanted to touch on it in this episode was that in one of the discussions that I was listening to, a very interesting and I think very relevant fact for the podcast was brought up. And this is the fact that the majority of stocks are actually only held for a few seconds at a time, as they're actually traded by computers running specific algorithms in what's termed high-frequency trading. So this essentially means that trades can be conducted in as short as 1 64 millionth of a second, or about the time it takes for a computer to process an order and send it out to another machine. So their automated systems allow them to scan markets for information and respond faster, obviously more fast than what is humanly possible. So though there are different estimates, um, somewhere in the range of 50 to 80% of all market trading is performed by these algorithms. So really, what are the implications of this? So firstly, and I think most relevant to the podcast, finance jobs have transformed drastically over the last few decades. So for instance, uh, Goldman Sachs, one of the leaders out there, spends hundreds of millions of dollars on this technology and have more people working on this technology and in this area of technology than there are people on their own trading desks. And the trend towards this form of what's called now algo trading is now being somewhat enabled for retail investors as it is becoming more and more common to build simple trading algorithms. Though, of course, the high frequency form of this requires tremendous investment to be viable in the expensive computers that many of these hedge funds have. So it has been said that automation of trading systems in financial markets represents really the last phase of depersonalizing activities previously done by traders. So this type of trading really enables computers to determine the moment and the way of executing sales orders, but still do not make autonomous decisions regarding the choice of instruments to be traded or trading criteria. So overall, some studies actually claim that algorithmic trading actually creates more liquidity in the market and accelerates the incorporation of existing information into prices. But there are, of course, some negative impacts to this type of trading as well. The most obvious, of course, is market manipulation, which takes on a number of different forms, running from uh, front running, back away, painting the tape, uh, which you can look into the show notes for a further description of each of those. But essentially, due to the speed at which the trades can be executed, the price is subtly manipulated to benefit those who actually owns the computer who's doing the trades. So this has the effect of crowding out fundamental traders and their ability to acquire information to learn from and make efficient investment decisions. But more relevant to the entire GameStop situation is that this makes it so that investing at a retail level is more akin to jumping into shark infested waters where you are more likely to lose a significant chunk of your investment. So finally, the most macro scale issue is a large scale market crash can be caused with ubiquitous algorithmic trading, which is actually often to blame for both the 1987 crash and flash crash of 2010, where algorithm parameters are continuously triggered, leading to rapid market downturns. So there are many others, and I recommend looking into the links I have in the show notes, but essentially what can be understood from this is that there is an understanding that investing in the stock market is becoming more and more challenging for the quote-unquote little guy as a direct consequence of this technology being applied. But how does this connect to GameStop, and what are the possible social ramifications for the future? So firstly, the script was flipped. The small retail investor, through the use of social media technology, had perhaps found a way to retake some form of control, however temporary, from the large institutions that can leverage their resources and computers to increase their own profits. So many are now claiming that this is going to be the first of many events where communities of retail investors, in essence, fight back against the larger hedge funds and powerful automated systems. Secondly, GameStop is drawing a younger crowd 
into being interested in market and finance issues who otherwise might not have shown interest previously. And finally, we can now reconnect that point that I mentioned at the beginning where both uh, Reddit and Robinhood were cutting off access to its users. Um, there is now a renewed interest in decentralized platforms where users cannot be revoked for participating simply because the central authority deems it to be so. I think it'll be a very interesting trend to follow over the course of 2021 and beyond, especially after the same situation, more or less the same situation, happened to Trump and a number of his supporters when they were banned from Twitter and other social media platforms, which really, I think, added more fuel to this decentralized fire. So I'll be looking to bring on a guest in the next few months, which can elaborate on this point in particular, as I think it'll be in conversation, especially if a GameStop 2 happens in the next couple of months. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks for listening. If you like what you hear and you want to support the podcast and the conversations here, the best way to do this is to go on to Apple Podcasts and leave a review, as it helps the algorithm to reach out to new listeners and brings the show to them. Also, feel free to check out the website, automatedpodcast.org, where you can find the show notes for each episode, written articles on the themes of the podcast, and a library of resources on the topic of emerging tech and automation. Also, if you want to reach out and leave any feedback or you have any questions about the podcast or any of the conversations, there are general contact links such as email, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. for you there on the website. And finally, for those of you that want more than just an audio conversation, the video recordings are now going to be up on YouTube for the newer conversations. So feel free to check out the videos by searching for Automated Podcast on YouTube, where, of course, you can like and subscribe if you prefer to support the podcast that way. The Automated Podcast.